Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and I'm here flying solo on this extended holiday weekend. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone who's watching or listening wherever you may be and wish you a happy Thanksgiving, whether that's belated or we're still carrying through the weekend. The Pittsburgh Steelers, of course, traveling Monday night to play the 4-6-1 and one Indianapolis Colts, the Steelers 3-7 and seven themselves. So quite a bit of stuff still kind of hanging in the balance as far as injury reports and things like that. So I invite you to check out the Cheat Sheet podcast, which will air at some point in the following day or so. I'm not actually sure um, when I might get all of that final information. It's a really, a really awkward, awkward, awkward type deal when you're dealing with the holidays. It almost feels like, like a bye week. And then you've got Monday night football, of course. So this one's going to be, this one's going to be kind of interesting because these two teams at times are kind of mirror images of one another. Um, the Indianapolis Colts, however, making kind of pulling the trigger more than maybe some of Steelers nation would like when it comes to coaching staff and coaching changes as of late First, their offensive coordinator was out the door. And then all of a sudden their head coach, former head coach, Frank Reich uh, pushed out the door as well for the lack of cold success this season. Of course, uh, four, six and one, they had the tie earlier in the year with the Houston Texans. I know that might seem like they have a better record than the Steelers, but there are a lot of things that match up quite fairly here. I think the biggest thing though, is uh, the takeaway you've got first time ever, never like coached at any level, Jeff Saturday, Former starting center, of course, all those great years, Pro Bowl, all pro years, playing with Peyton Manning. And as we've attested many times here on the program, offensive linemen, some of the brightest, brilliant minds in football. So I'm not going to take anything away from Jeff Saturday, his play caller, first time play callers. They didn't even have anybody that could call plays. It's not true, though, on the defensive side of the ball, where Indianapolis has been quite good this season. Um, just to, uh, kind of preface a little bit of this game, the over under on it is 39 points even, and that's just kind of telling you where everyone thinks this may be headed. So that's where I'm thinking, where might this be headed? Are we going to, which Steelers team are we going to see? Are we going to steal, see the one that was able to, uh, put up 20 points and a half in, uh, you know, last week? Are we going to see the team that is incapable of putting up any points and a half like last week? Or, and I know it was 30 overall. I, I kid, I kid, I tease, I tease, but we know that that was a little bit late with the other touchdown. You've got the other side of the football with the Steelers defense. Are they going to be able to make a stop or are they going to just get totally run over? Uh, don't forget that the Colts have one of the premier backs in the National Football League, Jonathan Taylor, who uh, currently leads the team 151 carries for 693 yards and three touchdowns. He has been hampered with injuries thus far this year. So uh, let me see how many games so far. He's, uh, he has appeared in eight of them, but he's been a little banged up. Of course, he uh, led the team in rushing each of the last two seasons. Um Rear high last year, 1,811 yards and 18 touchdowns. So he is a force to be reckoned with. The Colts have, um, in the interim, gone back to playing and starting veteran quarterback Matt Ryan. This is a guy that I feel like later in the year turns into a pumpkin. Just like, I love the Cinderella reference because it's just like, you know, the fancy glass slippers. He went to a brand new team, and I got a feel for the Colts. They seem to get every retrade quarterback that's out there. This is the reason why I keep telling all of you out there, just have some patience with Kenny Pickett. The Colts, I mean, they they had lucked out, pun intended, when they went from Peyton Manning, who had neck surgery, to having a top overall pick and hopefully a surefire top overall pick, and it was with Andrew Luck, who stepped away from the game. And over the years, I mean, they've had like Phillip Rivers and Carson Wentz and Matt Ryan. They tried Sam Ellinger here and whatever experiment. I don't know if that had to deal with the owner, uh, Jim Ursay, who's quite the intriguing owner himself. And, you know, it's, it's just... Uh, it's kind of a dumpster fire over there because on paper, this team should be far more talented than what they are. Matt Ryan's still trying to 
kind of uh, turn his career around after being in the doldrums for so long in Atlanta. He's had mixed success there, but of course, that's another franchise that just had been doing all so well. He's uh, 37 and a half years of age, too, so you know how that clock's ticking based on just recent uh, Steelers kind of uh, you know, happenings with Ben Roethlisberger. So uh, we'll see. The aging Matt Ryan uh, is playing at home, he's playing in a dome. It's prime time. The team doesn't seem to be, maybe maybe they're supported, maybe they're not. I don't know. It seems like uh, just with the struggles with anything, some of the interest has fallen off maybe here in Indianapolis. I'm not sure if you're going to have Steelers Nation travel as well on the holiday weekend, particularly with a Monday primetime game. So we'll see how that turns out there in Lucas Oil Stadium. Um, once again, <laughs> I was just thinking of it. I'm like turf field, turf field. Everybody was talking turf field and Najee Harris just recently said he loves to play on turf and I'm like, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, to each their own sort of kind of, but yeah, Matt Ryan, uh, so far this season, a touch 10 touchdown passes on the year on his campaign with the Colts, 24, over 2,400 yards, uh, of passes. Uh, he has, however, turned the ball over nine times, nine interceptions. And some of those um, earlier in the season, in his last two games, he only has one touchdown to zero interceptions. Uh, currently, though, he had been sacked five times in those last few games after Jeff Saturday taking over. But like I said, uh, you know, completing 73% of his passes, 435 yards during that uh, span. So he will play it safe. He will play it very safe, close to the vest. And that's because, quite frankly, this team just, they operate. They they operate or will try to operate on the ground. They will try and get the ball to the running backs, such as Jonathan Taylor. <clears throat> And uh, th that's the way that's the way they will um, flow the ball through. They they had um, they had Naeem uh, Hines. They've had some other backups. They just haven't had the kind of success. Philip Lindsay, who you might remember with the Denver Broncos, it, it, it's basically Taylor or nothing. And that's the way the offense has been rolling through. And I, I'm not trying to just poo poo all over the Colts and just say, well, this will be a cakewalk for the Steelers. I haven't gotten to that half of it just yet. It's very well that these teams are evenly matched and one of them will look at the other one as inferior as a game that they should be able to win. And this should make it fairly competitive. So that's why I'm bringing up, you know, the 2020 tie with the Houston Texans, the Colts lost to the Jaguars in Jacksonville. They lost a close one to the Chiefs. Uh, or they won a close one with the Chiefs, I'm sorry, which is the big surprise one on the on the schedule, right? Uh, but they've lost uh, both of their games in, in division to the Tennessee Titans. They won an overtime game 12-9, to if you remember that disgusting Thursday night football game against the Denver Broncos. We all want our money back for Amazon Prime for that one, right? Uh, they, they were capable of putting up 34 points on the Jacksonville Jaguars. They had lost three in a row before... Reich was canned here, losing to the Titans, the Commanders, and then uh, the final nail in the coffin, the New England Patriots. They have just not been a very solid football team when it comes to the offensive side of the ball. Uh, they are 31st in points scored per game, just a, a smidge worse than the Steelers right now, who are ranked 28th with 17 per game. The Colts are at 15.7. Defensively, they fare a little better. They usually only give up about 20 per game, which is good for 11th in the league, but they have been coughing up the ball a little too much on that offensive side of the football. Uh, they are minus eight in the league. This is very similar to the New Orleans Saints storyline coming into that game with the Steelers where the Saints were dead last in the league in the turnover differential. The minus eight is 31st overall. The Steelers are uh, now even Steven zero. They hadn't been turning the ball over as much in recent games, and they've also been forcing turnovers on defense. That puts them at 16th, right dead in the middle of the pack of the National Football League. The Colts are 17th in passing and 26th uh, in running and rushing the ball. And that's primarily because Taylor had been banged up. The offensive line on paper really should be a really good unit, but they've had their struggles as well. Uh, of course, that compares to the Steelers 23rd and 22nd. So you could see uh, how like the scales of balance here are. Both of these teams struggle offensively. Maybe Vegas and the bookies got this right, and this is going to be a low-scoring game. The Steelers got to get this done against a seventh-ranked Colts pass defense led by Stephon Gilmore. He is still he's still a dude. 
Uh, I kind of thought maybe he might have been washed before landing in Indianapolis, but he still seems to be getting things done. Uh, this team itself is kind of interesting in the fact that uh, they have a really stellar linebacker and Shaquille Leonard, formerly Darius Leonard, if you know the story behind his name. Not really a name change, just everyone called him Darius and he kind of stuck around with it. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like how Barry Sanders retired, right? So uh, I believe injured reserve for the rest of the year. He'd been on and off again, and they've been trying to get him on the field, and that's a huge loss for their defensive unit. So we'll see how the Steelers, which Steelers team can show up here because defensively, the Steelers have been horrid against the pass as of late. They're ranked 32nd in league, giving up 272 yards per game. Uh, they're seventh against the run, and you wouldn't necessarily expect that. But if they could bottle up the run game here, it's not like Matt Ryan has a uh, a ton of options in the pass game. He's got Paris Campbell. He's got uh, Michael Pittman Jr., and that's uh, that's about where it ends. So we'll have to see uh, primarily what they can do. Uh, Mo Ali Cox, a capable uh, receiving tight end when he does get the ball in his hands. Uh, you know, none of these names really strike fear in me. Uh, it's pretty much Taylor or bust, right? So we'll see how the Steelers can maybe rebound maybe rebound defensively uh we'll have to, we'll have to check that out but it's been pretty much i think paris camel i'm going to check here i believe has been the leading receiver so far no it's been Pittman jr uh 67 catches for 678 yards number one here paris camel 44 4 4 40 and if you combine that with the rookie alec pierce they only have five receiving touchdowns on the season so again the struggles are very much so in the same category. Pierce, however, 28 receptions for 424 yards. He's averaging over 15 per reception, so he's a little more of the straight-line threat here. If you could call him that, we'll see. Uh, again, the Steelers, there's been a lot of flack thrown at their, the Steelers' secondary as of late. I think Levi Wallace has been playing extremely well. I think Cam Sutton's been playing extremely well. And it's like nobody really throws in Sutton's direction. They try and find out if they could... Uh, really opposing teams if they could take advantage of a couple of things. And it's been the middle of the field. It's been maybe the overaggression of Minka Fitzpatrick or maybe even Terrell Edmonds, who, you know, uh, he didn't have the, the biggest game last week, but his presence is still felt in other ways on the field. So I don't necessarily want to throw him under the bus. Where I'm throwing anybody maybe under the bus a little bit is when they have to go roll with Robert Spillane at inside linebacker and in pass coverage and, you know, situations in these sub packages Spillane is just, uh, he's hes not been sharp. And I, I know I've been all over him the entire season. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's just uh, the way it is. The Steelers and their personnel, it just hasn't been working out too well uh, with Spillane, with Arthur Mallette, as well as the nickel corner. A lot of the ways that they could, that the Colts could exploit this in their game in, in, uh with their offense is to just run these quick slants toward the middle of the field, run some of the drag routes, and any route that's coming across formations and the Steelers are playing zone, they're going to be able to exploit these soft areas in the zone. Uh, they could also exploit when some of these players are in man because Spillane is just not the same kind of speed, sideline to sideline player. And I just I still haven't understood to date why I understand Devin Bush probably isn't the same guy that he has been miles Jack, but why Spillane is usually the guy. And that's going to be an interesting case study here because Spillane did show up on the injury report here this week. I'm um, actually going to bounce over to that real quick. The Steelers injury report. Miles Boykin was back to limited at least a uh, core special teams player. He could really help out. Akella Witherspoon has not practiced at all this week, has, and he hasn't really in weeks. Uh, I don't know why he might not be placed on injured reserve if he's being babied along. I, I don't really understand the situation there other than uh, he might be taking a roster spot until William Jackson could be activated from injured reserve in a couple of weeks. The big one here is the one-two punch because you had Najee Harris initially with Jalen Warren, and Najee, I believe... You know, he's turned his season around. We could see if the Steelers are capable of maybe pounding the rock the same way that I'm saying that the Indianapolis Colts will rely on. If you don't have to have Kenny Pickett throw the ball 50 times in a game, especially against this Colts secondary, I believe that this might be the best um, the, the best path of success for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I would be remiss to not mention 
uh, some of the other players in that secondary. However, Ronnie McLeod, Kenny Moore, Julian Blackman, and Isaiah Rogers. So uh, it might not be a bunch of household names, but these are some unsung heroes when it comes to the Colts secondary. And we'll see. I, I think one of the things missing that the Steelers weren't capable of doing here was running the football a little bit more with uh, Kenny Pickett as well. But I'm going to jump back to that uh, I get off track here, especially when I'm by myself, but with the injury report, Mason Cole was a DMP and an LP here limited on Friday. Of course, Steelers still have a Saturday practice. Uh, make sure you tune into the cheat sheet episode in order to get uh, some updates on that to see what the game status is. I don't expect Warren and Witherspoon's definitely is just, he's not going to show up anytime soon. Uh, Jalen Warren, on the other hand, <sighs> I mean, uh, Mike Tomlin said he'll leave the light on for him, the old Motel 6 commercial, right? I just don't see it happening, but it is a Monday night game, so there is a potential there that he could get on the field. But Mason Cole is supposed to be a full go. Ah, excuse me, a little bit of coffee uh, off screen here. But the rest of your injury report was basically players getting uh, some veteran rest. TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, Larry Okajobi. Okajobi, he needs it. They were all back at it, though, the very next day on Friday in practice. Belaine showed up with a back injury limited. James Daniels groin limited. Connor Hayward illness. Colts are dealing with a lot of that as well when we look up and down their injury report. Uh, illness going through their locker room, it appears, also, so DeForest Buckner uh, dealing with ribs and an illness has not practiced each of the, the last two days. That's a pretty big one for them. Um, Kylan Granson, he's a reserve tight end, uh, did not practice. Ryan Kelly shows up with a shoulder, knee. He was a DNP and he, and he was limited Friday. I expect much in the same way as Mason Cole that he's going to battle it out. And playing this game, he's a huge piece of that offensive line, of course. Witty Pay uh, had not practiced as well each of the last two games. That's a pretty big one as well for the Colts. Paris Camel, one of their few receiving threats, but that was illness, so we could expect Paris to probably be active for Monday night. Grover Stewart shows up shoulder and then a day of rest. So they're uh, they are definitely uh, kind of babying him along. And it's not the biggest part of uh, – of their offense, but still somebody along that defensive front. And they their whole defensive front is on this injury report, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Quiddy Pay, DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart. I hadn't actually got to Yannick Ngakwe. He showed up on yesterday's report, limited with a back injury. Matt Pryor, uh, illness, but full practice. Jelani Woods, uh, another tight end, uh, full practice each of the last two days with a shoulder. And then Dennis Kelly shows up Friday uh, with uh, illness as well. So uh, some things going through that locker room there. Uh, we'll end up seeing what goes on. I talked about that Colts offensive line, a little scatterbrain, of course, but Bernard Ryman, uh, Raymond, I'm sorry, uh, Dennis Kelly would be uh, his backup, of course. You've got uh, Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, uh, Will Fries, and Braden Smith. Matt Pryor is another reserve. So when you're talking about reserve linemen that could be out for the game, I don't expect any of them to be. But this still kind of screws with things such as special teams or having to require more of your starters, playing special teams. Just something to kind of keep your eye on uh, when we get those final injury reports. Again, check out a shameless plug for the cheat sheet. So I've kind of covered uh, almost in full, like, you know, the Colts side of the ball here, but I would be remiss to not bring up the other uh, linebackers in his core led by Bobby Okereke. Uh, he's a, a pretty, pretty solid player for them. Uh, I know I, I, Zaire Franklin, EJ Speeder, the other two, I hadn't really mentioned enough about Yannick Ngakwe, who was brought in to be their major pass rush or pass rush specialist off the edge. But Zaire Franklin and Okereke, these guys, they're they're over 200 combined tackles this season. Franklin has 110, Okereke has 95. They're not really sack specialists in that uh, in that sort of uh, vein. Yannick Ngakwe, however, is the dude that's leading this team so far in sacks. He has six and a half. DeForest Buckner, who I said was on this injury report as well, has five and a half. Quiddy Pay has four. Grover Stewart has three. So you can see how this is um, this is important for them to get healthy. I think that extra day also helps some of the game st status for these players. If they are playing a Sunday at one o'clock, it might prove to be a little more damaging 
uh, to the Indianapolis Colts. I hadn't talked enough about the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's like what Steelers team shows up and what can the Steelers do in order to come out of this with the victory? I mean, the Steelers are sitting here practically, you know, uh, they're they're practically out of it. What are they at? Like 5% chance of maybe making the playoffs at this point, three and seven. I know a lot of you are licking your chops and salivating and saying, and you know, just yay, hooray, you, you were right. The Steelers were going to have a losing record. Mike Tomlin, he's, he's doomed. He's doomed. It's his first losing season in the, in the national football league. It's like, come on, man. It's like, uh, you're never going to get me to celebrate anything like that. So just, you know, shut it, shut the front door there. I think the Steelers, like I said, they're not going to need to, I don't want them to like lean on Kenny Pickett to run the ball too much, but this is a quarterback driven league. And as much as I had just, just shat all over Matt Ryan, you got to get the ball, George Pickens and George Pickens is going, is ascending as the Steelers wide receiver one. We've already said it for weeks that he has already been there. Statistically, you could see that things aren't necessarily going to Deontay Johnson, but if Pickens could draw, draw and beat double coverage, which he's got to learn and, and get a feel to do as a rookie, and Pickett's delivering him the ball. This is a nice one-two punch, maybe for years to come. I want to see Kenny maybe be able to use his feet a little more. There's a couple of plays I think he left on the field by throwing the ball, Andy Dalton-wise, to the sidelines. Uh, I think some of the advice he might be getting is uh, mis mismatched here. And, of course, some of that is just the jitters in the feels of being a rookie. He's been heavily criticized for interceptions, many of which weren't his fault. He hasn't turned the ball over in the last few games. So uh, as long as you get some mistake-free football out of Kenny Pickett, you got to have that offensive line, not commit any type of penalties as well. I think Pat Fryermuth is going to be a huge tool here in the middle of the field. They're going to have to find him. And uh, maybe you get Deontay a little more involved just for the sake of being able to open up George and get George some more opportunities. A lot of that's going to lean, of course, on Najee Harris carrying more of a full load. You're not going to have to worry about cold or weather conditions, of course, because they're playing at Lucas Oil Stadium. They're playing in the dome. Doesn't look like a dome. Looks like a giant power plant or an old factory. It's a really, really, really awesome building, by the way, if you've never been. Uh, I highly recommend it. Indianapolis in general, great place. And St. Elmo Steakhouse, for those who know, you know, right? Uh, shrimp cocktail, if you did. If you haven't, shrimp cocktail. It's all, That's what you got to know. It's an appetizer. Very expensive, but it's also very good. So anyways, um, <laughs> Enjoy your time in Indianapolis if you are going there. Uh, make sure you get a reservation. Awesome place. Uh, just uh, don't don't ask me um, about the menu prices. <laughs> One of the top steakhouses in the entire country, if not the world, for those who aren't familiar. But anyways, back to the Steelers' offense. Uh, I think we saw some flashes of what crazy Matt Canada had been talking about. I still don't particularly love the play calling. Jermaine Pratt saying that they call the same plays all the time. Oh, okay. Well, the Steelers still scored 30 points on your ass. So, I mean, this is an offense that runs the same plays. And there are some things that were said. that uh, I even think Jerry Dulac, who sometimes gets to be the old man yelling at the clouds, one of the Steelers' longtime uh, reporters, beat writers, he often has great content, but sometimes I feel like he's baiting people. One of the things I think that I, I believe it was Jerry that came out and said, Good teams will run the same play more than once. Sometimes they'll tweak it up just a little bit. I understand where everybody's coming from. The bubble screen, we all hate bubble screens. We hate the jet sweep stuff. You're kind of hoping that um, it's not that predictable. I love how people also say it's like, hey, we're watching at home. We're watching in the stands, and we know what's coming. That's because you pay attention, and you intimately know your team a, a, a lot, right? The Colts only have about a week worth of practice, three days worth of practice. They have whatever extra film study that they're going to be able to do to try to bring them up to speed to be as intimately knowledgeable about the Steelers' operations. The sad thing is, is that when it's like, as Stan Saver quoted, elementary, he actually said juvenile and he pulled back on it. With the play calling, that's the actual problem. Um, it's the time, it's the situation. It's what you're also dealing with is, let's face it, Matt Canada, what, year two? Is he cut out for this? It's not a, it's a not for long league. And you know, you don't have the patience for it all the time. It's a tale of two halves and it's game script where largely you have a collection of, I wouldn't even say 50 plays, what 30 plays, 25 plays. You know what the Kenny Pickett's most comfortable running in that offense. They're going to go to Kenny and say, what, what do you want to do? Uh, what works out well for you? And you got to find that run pass balance. 
I think this team sometimes just gets too stuck in. Well, that play didn't work on first down, unless it's already a run on first down, of course. Then, of course, we know it didn't work. Then second down, it's like very obvious sometimes that they just run the ball. But there were some, there's were some. been some cracks. There's been some seams here where we've seen uh, the bootleg. We saw a bootleg that didn't work with Kenny, and then they went right back to it, and it did work. A little bit of RPO type stuff, a little bit of checks at the line. So as Kenny gets more comfortable with this, I'm not saying that Matt Canada's job's safe by any means. And you're just hoping that he doesn't outsmart himself, shoot themselves in the foot. That's largely where the momentum went in last week's second half. I think the Steelers could be able to compete with this team. I think they're going to be able to run the football. They just brought on Master Teague again. So that's probably not like another thing that should be noted. Master Teague, who had a phenomenal Ohio State guy, right? Big game uh, here Saturday at noon. Uh, against Michigan, we're going to see for all the marbles, right, and, uh, and the big uh, rivalry. But Master Teague wasn't a guy out of college. I liked um, Trey Sermon, but Master Teague, I'm like, eh, that guy's not a professional football player, is he? And he had a phenomenal camp, and I thought he was a pretty, I thought he was a pretty good addition that could have at least made the practice squad. Now, with that said, does Teague get called up Monday? Do they have any faith in Benny Snell being able to carry the? Football, being able to spell Najee Harris, pass protection, something that Jalen Warren's been very good at is coming in on third downs and helping with pass protection. This is where the Steelers, this is where some of the offensive problems lie in because you're counting on running backs to pick up a blitz. You're counting on tight ends to block or chip. And, and this delays and it kind of stutters. You just don't have five dudes on your offensive line like you used to that could get a hat on a hat. Half the time, they don't get a hat on anything. And we know the guys we're talking about, primarily Kevin Dotson, Dan Moore on the left side of that line, of the offensive line. And you got to give them some help. And it's one less body that you're capable of throwing a ball to. And when you're able to get that little outlet kind of plat, uh, kind of pass in the flat, Najee hasn't been used too much in the run game or in the pass game. He's been used primarily run game, and he's come off the field on third downs. You haven't seen his pass numbers or his receiving numbers as high as they had been in previous seasons for that particular reason. And losing Jalen Warren, who's somebody that's a good one, two, you know, lightning and thunder punch. That kind of sucks. I don't think that they have the same dynamic with like Benny Snell. Benny Snell has his job because he's good at special teams. And uh, that's, that's, that's why he's there. Will Benny Snell be the secondary punch? I don't think Benny Snell gets even five carries. If he even sees much time on the field at all, we'll see what happens. Um, Master Teague's not a guy that was just thrown onto this team. He was there for training camp. He came in a little late, but he knows the playbook. He knows enough that he should be able to pick up some basic concepts. And if they feel he's a better pass protector, I would be surprised to see him get called up and get five, 10 snaps in this game, maybe a carry or two even. Uh, Got to hope though, as being like an undrafted rookie type guy, street free agent, protect the football. So there's always concerns with that too, or blown assignment and can he get skilled? So those are the things I look at with the Steelers offense. I think as long as they can get this run game going, which I think they can against Indy, and it's going to be the story. It's going to be the trenches on both sides of the ball. Will Jonathan Taylor kill the Steelers defense? Let's jump over to the Steelers defense and let's see what we think about them because Alex Highsmith has had a hell of a year so far and he seems to do his best now that TJ Watt is back. And I know some... T.J. Watt still did some amazing things the other day. I know Flash was down on him. Uh, I'm nowhere near as down on him. He's got a sack and a half on the season, Watt does, but Alex Highsmith has nine sacks, Cam Hayward with four. They got to be able to pressure Matt Ryan. Uh, you put any pressure on him, even a gentle breeze, and this guy folds like a cheap uh, like soccer mom chair, <laughs> pop-up chair. It will blow away in the distance. And I, I truly believe that the Steelers could get uh, pressure on the quarterback, that's only going to help the rest of the guys I was talking about earlier, like Spillane and Arthur Millette and the rest of the defense. And hopefully Miles Jack is back to full health. He had been dealing with some lingering I issues over the last couple of games too. He's huge against the run game. Um, he just can't allow, like, you know who the assignment is. When you have Samjay Perrine, like I said, look like Randy Moss coming out of the backfield with three touchdowns. You can't, you can't allow for that. You absolutely can't allow for that. So... Uh, hopefully the Steelers figure that out because I guarantee you the Colts are looking at that and they're looking at the tape from that Bengals game 
and they're thinking to themselves, here's a spot that we can truly exploit. It's not like they have like a, gi a giant, like I said, the receiver core with Michael Pittman. I thought Michael Pittman might be a guy at some point that could uh, do some damage, but uh, you know, he really hasn't. And Paris Camel is just kind of like another guy that's there as well. Um, Naeem Hines is no longer in town anymore. He got traded to Buffalo. He was primarily that third down back that they had to be able to release the ball to. And Hines had, had only 25 catches, 188 yards. Taylor, 21 for 97 on the year. So uh, Deion Jackson's another guy that's there with about uh, 20 catches, 124 yards, too. That's a backup running back. I, I don't see I don't see necessarily where again there shouldn't be this huge threat of the Colts putting up even 20 points in this game. These teams are relatively evenly matched, and we should be able to see this we should be able to see whatever they do. If it's a low scoring game, I'd like to see the see the Steelers 14 to 17 points in the first half. That's ideally where I think they they, they if they could be then they might be on their way to victory, provided that the defense hasn't completely folded. The highest paid defense, hopefully fully healthy for the first time uh, this entire season, can put some pressure again on uh, Matt Ryan, bottle up uh, Jonathan Taylor. But again, it's going to have to be some you know play action calls and things like that. I understand that Jeff Saturday, this is now his third game ever in the NFL, but they've had a couple of weeks to kind of tweak and change some things as they might see fit. Uh, but it, it, you got to respect the defense here for the Colts and the Steelers again have stunk so bad offensively that you got to hope that they don't, they don't lose like a time of possession battle. Jonathan Taylor just chewing up and eating up clock. And all of a sudden the Steelers defense is gassed and you're trying to rotate players in and keep bodies fresh because you can't keep cam out there all the time. You can't keep Larry Okajobi out there all the time. That's the primary concern that I see. So the Steelers are going to have to force some three and outs and also get some turnovers, win the turnover uh, time of the time of possession battle is key in this game as well. And just run the ball on offense. I think that kind of covers all the bases, Matt, Wright, You're kicking in a dome, buddy. So you did well last week. Let's see what you could do here in Indianapolis uh, playing under a roof. Uh, that should benefit him and hopefully Presley Harvin, who I've been out and down on as far as being a punter, uh, aids in that field position battle stuff as well, folks. Thanks for thanks for joining me. Happy Thanksgiving once again. Good holiday uh, weekend to uh, you and yours. And I'll reconvene here in a day or so uh, with the other fill in the blanks for the cheat sheet episode where you can watch the game. Obviously, it's an ESPN game, Monday Night Football. So enjoy that as you will. No Chris Collinsworth for a cha change. No Tony Romo. <laughs> so, uh, but if Joe Buck and those guys bother you, well, I'm sorry. There's not much else I could do to help aid that. And uh, that'll, that'll do it. Primetime football for the Steelers. Hopefully you don't, uh, we don't have a game where you feel like you have, you can shut it off and go to bed early and get ready for work Tuesday morning. So my name is Joe. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, we encourage all of our viewers and listeners out there to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.